one of the mahavakyas great sayings of hinduism is tat tvam asi that thou art or more simply that you are this states unequivocally that you and everything else are of the same essence a spark of the infinite this mahavakya appears in the chandogya upanishad associated with the samaveda this statement appears in the section of the chandogya upanishad as a conversation between sage uddalaka and his son shvetaketu shvetaketu is the son of sage uddalaka aruni his father himself a great sage sends the 12 year old to learn from a guru the young boy shvetaketu returns after completing his studies for 12 years under a teacher he is now 24 years old has studied all the vedas and is full of knowledge though smart shvetaketu is very vain of his knowledge on seeing his ego sage uddalaka his father asks him if he knows the essence of all that exists he words it in a very interesting way did you ask about the instructions through which the unheard becomes heard the unthought of becomes thought of and the unknown becomes known now shvetaketu is stumped not knowing the answer he asks his father how this could be accomplished how he could gain this knowledge sage uddalaka starts to expound the brahma gnana the knowledge of the supreme absolute to his son as a father and a very good teacher instead of being really theoretical uddalaka tries to illustrate this point with several real world examples he tells his son knowledge of a piece of clay makes one know and understand all transformations of clay all these transformations are mere words clay is the reality this is the teaching now the import of what sage uddalaka says is this clay transforms into pots and pans of many different shapes and sizes when one looks at the pot even though the pot is very different from a lump of clay one knows that the essence of the pot is just clay the word pot or pan is just a name given to that transformation of clay clay pervades the pot he goes to the heights of vedantic advaitic wisdom with this simple example similarly all that exists is the transformation of the brahman the supreme absolute knowing the essence of being enables one to understand the true nature of reality he gives many such examples and then tells shvetaketu that there is only one single reality in this world and that reality appears to be many because of the different names and forms superimposed on this single reality and he says this statement impregnated with wisdom sadeva somye idam agra asid ekameva advitiyam he addresses his son shvetaketu as saumya as a good looking one he says o saumya in the beginning there was only one existence ekameva advitiyam now interestingly he adds some maintain before the world originated there was non existence they claim that the world emerged from this nothing but there is no proof for this now here he tries to emphasize the difference between vedanta and other nihilistic schools of thought without getting too deep into this at this point advaita vedanta states that all that exists is just the transformation of the brahman as it moves from avyakta unmanifest into the manifest state avyakta does not mean non existent or nothing it actually means unmanifest that is something that has to manifest later shankara in his commentary gives an example to illustrate this point in the morning one can see the potter spread the clay for making pots and plates in the afternoon on seeing the pots and plates one could still perceive that all this was clay in the morning clay existed and again this is very different from all the nihilistic philosophies that postulate something was created out of nothing 
this also is not a creationist philosophy that says something created everything the definition of the brahman is anadi anantam suddham shivam shantam nirgunam without beginning and end pure auspicious and unqualified without any attributes or qualities all that exists is a dance of delight the leela of this supreme absolute as it ebbs and flows across grand cycles of manifestation and dissolution manifests from avyakta and dissolves into avyakta so sage udalaka states that all that existed in the beginning was pure existence if you look at texts like the mandukya upanishad it is important to understand that the brahman is formless without attributes and indescribable brahman itself cannot be described in terms of space and time because it cost space and time so sage udalaka states that this existence this infinite consciousness entered into these elements manifesting itself in many names and forms now shweta ketu is still a little bit confused he asks his father to explain further sage udalaka asks shweta ketu to bring a fruit from a banyan tree he asks his son to break it and then tell him what he saw inside the fruit shweta ketu dutifully breaks the fruit and he sees the seed inside the fruit he shows his father the seeds sage udalaka then asks shweta ketu to break the seed further when the seed was broken he asks shweta ketu to tell him what was within the seed Shweta Ketu tells Udalaka that there is nothing in the seed but the sage corrects him he tells him the subtle part inside the seed is something that you cannot perceive however in this essence lies hidden the potential for a huge banyan tree Sage Udalaka gives several such examples and when he summarizes the wisdom he tells Shweta Ketu Saya esho anima aitadatmayam idam sarvam tat satyam sa atma tatvam asi shweta keto that which is the subtle essence of all is the self all this has got that as the self that is the truth that is the self that you are shweta ketu this is where the second statement tatvam asi comes into play now this is the highest knowledge that he tries to impart to his son the entire universe is a result of the permeation of the self the one true existence that manifested into this reality this is a very advaitic point of view that he is taking but the important part about him telling his son tatva masi is so that shweta ketu could be rid of his ego and move towards understanding the true nature of reality the sage reiterates to his son that the self is immortal it is the body that dies and when it dies the self leaves it it is in ignorance that we perceive that we are distinct from the universal self he tells his son that a person is born again and again until this ignorance is dispelled now many later teachers also use this example when the disciple would ask about perceived differences in the world they would always respond with that do art and ask the students to engage in nididhyasana meditative contemplation on this mahavakya by using this mahavakya as a teaching tool all perceived differentiation ceases this is the import of tattvam asi as sage udhalaka states if one knows this truth there is nothing unheard of or unthought of or unknown as always the known is a drop and the unknown an ocean peace